volgende story bevat tonele wat die gebruik van dwellings insluit. Kijker discretie wordt aanbeveel. The minute I get into the water, there's, there's, there's always that feeling of dread. You know, it's, the first thing you think is, is this going to be worth my while? Am I going to get enough abalone? To say, you know what, I came here and I took the risk, and it was worth it at the end of the day. While you're diving, you think of the fears around you. You think, hey, you know what, you might be eaten by a shark or something like that. But you don't let that play on your mind, because you're going to think of it, you're not going to get anything done. A South African sea slug had a fine proofers gereg in China. Geword. Sedert die vroege 1990s het dit een ernstige krisis in stroperij veroorzaak. Pogings om hier die soort stroping te staak was glad nie suksesvol nie. For many years we've been analyzing the trade in, in abalone, understanding the trade dynamics, the volume, the value of, of poached abalone in, in international trade. These are almost the highest, if not the highest, poaching levels that we have seen in the last 20 or more years. Perle Moon was früher volop in South Africa, maar getalle het weens onwettige visserij getuimel. Meer as 2000 ton Perle Moon word elke jaar op hierdie manier die stroopers toegeëien. Dit is meer as 20 keer die wettige hoeveelheid. We know that um, organized crime networks are directly involved and have been involved for for many, many years. So it is a very well-organized, well-established business. Abalone has embedded as a lucrative underworld commodity in South Africa, uh, controlled by Chinese criminal groups and local gangs. The abalone is dried in illicit facilities before being exported to Hong Kong. Uh, sometimes this abalone is traded for crystal methamphetamine or tuk. The illicit trade has only been possible because of South Africa's unique socio-economic circumstances. More than 25 years after apartheid, poverty is still pervasive, while we have some of the world's highest income inequality. In fishing communities marginalized by shrinking quotas and still feeling the effects of apartheid, uh, abalone became something rare, uh, a sudden means to earn good money. Angbergse vissersgemeenskap kyk uit oor een van Kaapstadse mees welgestelde voorstede. Werksgeleendhede is skaars en daar is net enkele vissers wat permitte het. Hoe ek roe op by die wat vis en vis is al staple food wat in Angburg. My grandfather was, was a fisherman. You see my grandmother all the years she work in the, in the fish factory. Both my grandfathers were, were fishermen. I, I actually grew up um, um, surviving out of the fishing industry. I, it was in, in 2005. I was in grade 11. You see, uh, I was no, I was a, a problem youth at, at the time. Got into a fight um, with the teacher there, and then I left school. Then I started carrying. People think you get a good buck, but there's a lot of um, expenses. Like every human has to cover, especially if you have children. So that was the way for me to feed my family. An entire economy has evolved around abalone poaching from divers to carriers, drivers, the middlemen who buy and sell on the product. Uh, in Hamburg, there are grandmothers who store poached abalone in their freezers for a small fee. Uh, hundreds of people in this fishing community rely on abalone poaching for income, supporting hundreds more dependents and this is a situation that holds in many other fishing communities around the country too. And it needs to be seen not just as a fisheries problem. It is not just a fisheries problem at all. Many other agencies need to get involved to, to address the, the problem holistically and really make a, a significant change. Poaching is exciting. It's like this Robin Hood thing where the guys poaching now are the guys with the money, so they're seen as heroes in the communities. We need to change that. We need conservationists to be heroes. It's unacceptable that any, any society can allow a species to go extinct. It is a reflection on our ability to manage each other, manage people. It's a, it's a societal thing, this. It's not a biodiversity thing. 
the situation will stay the same and it will produce more poachers because they will never look into the fact of the injustices of the past. Daar steek jaarliks bijna 60 miljoen Amerikaanse dollar achter Zuid-Afrika's onwettige perlemoenbedrijf. Tegen die huidige stropingskoers zal perlemoengetallen totaal in duie stort. Because of the involvement of organized crime, the apparent links to, to gangs in Cape Town, the links between the trade in abalone and the trade in drugs, um, there are also obviously some clear negative socioeconomic impacts associated with that. So you've got you know, really whole cohorts of generations of people um, along the coastline that are involved that are their work experience is only within an illicit economy. They don't have, le they haven't acquired any legal skills. Their business contacts, relationships, their network is entirely within an illegal business. So when that business collapses, which it ultimately will, they are left unskilled and without a, a business or, or, or a broader social network that will allow them to easily transition into getting legal work or using those skills you know, in the legal sector. Traffic dring aan dat strenger handelsbeheer met betrekking tot Zuid-Afrikaanse perlemoen toegepast wordt. Tonnen perlemoen wordt thans via andere Afrika-landen gesmokkeld om te vermijden dat het opgespoord wordt. Als hier die specie op sites zijn rooilijst geplaatst kan worden, zal dit helpen om die probleem te voorkomen. Yeah, but what we've already seen in recent years is an increase in the number of countries each year that are used to essentially launder the abalone and, and, uh, and get it to the destination markets. So the only way in which that situation can be changed is by listing it in terms of CITES. It would automatically provide them with a legal basis on which to do inspections. And if that consignment doesn't have the right documentation, CITES documentation, then there's an infringement. They can seize the consignment and they can prosecute. Selling the plight of the rhino is a lot easier. It's easier to understand because you can drive for 10 minutes and go and see a nature reserve and you see a rhino, whereas you really have to be able to dive to really see the abalone. And dive quite well, actually. With the reduced numbers, you have to look hard to find them. Sonder oplossings sal perlemoen stroopry eers en kry, wanneer daar niks meer perlemoen oor is om te stroop nie. The reality really struck me one night while I was out on sea. And this place used to be like very packed with abalone. And you know, I was like diving off the boat. It was late at night. And I saw that this place was actually depleted of abalone. And, that, and then the reality struck me that, you know, there's a resource, it's not gonna last. It's, it, it is getting depleted, it is kind of getting thin. And the regret is that you, you were part of this and it won't be around for much longer.